My name is Beatrice Edu. Thank you for joining us. Now, lawyers for the Progressive People's Party and the Electoral Commission are in court making oral representation in the disqualification of Dr. Papakosi Indum from the presidential race. The High Court here in the case is expected to set a date for judgment after the argument. Lawyers for the Progressive People's Party, led by Mr. Yukoi Otu, are seeking that the court quashes the EC's decision to reject Dr. Indum's forms, as well as restrain the EC from balloting for presidential candidate. But lawyers for the Electoral Commission, led by Justice Chebafo, are vehemently opposed to the reliefs being sought by lawyers for the PPP. A PPP victory in the ongoing case will see Dr. Papakosi Indum back on the ballot paper. The Progressive People's Party is among 12 presidential aspirants uh, who have been disqualified by the EC from participating in this year's polls. We know that Nanakonedu's NDP, as well as the PNC, have all filed their writs, and we'll bring you more at midday. On the campaign trail now, the new patriotic party presidential candidate has taken his campaign tour to the voter region shortly after president john mahama rounded up his tour of the region nana Kofuado visited five constituencies on his first day of his campaign tour where party executives have expressed satisfaction at the number of residents who turned up at rally grounds in all the constituencies he started the day in the north Dai constituency where he paid a courtesy call on the chiefs and people of Peki and its environs of Peki jogbati Togbe agamele the sith who spoke on behalf of chiefs in the area, endorsed Nana Okufado and dismissed the assumption that everyone in the Volta region is a sympathizer of the NDC. He was, however, optimistic the MPP presidential hopeful will help solve the numerous challenges of communities in his area. <laughs> Nado respect us and respect him and have accepted him wholeheartedly. We in South Dai have a lot of challenges. The NDC has tried to solve some, but not all. We are optimistic Nana Kufuado will do it for us when he wins the elections. We support Nana and know he can help us. That is why we want to lay our problems before him. Road network on the Peki Training College campus is very bad and we'll be happy if Nana and the MPP will consider constructing it for us. The Peki Secondary School also lacks infrastructure. Nanado later moved to a rally at Have in the Afajato South constituency. He outlined programs and policies aimed at creating jobs and revamping the Ghanaian economy to electorate at Have and urged them to vote wisely in the upcoming polls. At Vakbo, Nana Kufuado disclosed he is convinced people of the Volta region are ready for change. He told President Mahama that he will continue to beg Ghanaians for their votes. In the Kando constituency, hundreds of residents lined up the streets of Kando chanting, We want change to welcome Nana Ekufuado. He commended residents on their turn up 
and reiterated the annual allocation of $1 million to every constituency to facilitate development of the country. Nane Kufado and his campaign team then moved to Nkonya and Abotuasi in the Biakoye constituency, where he was greeted with similar crowds as he brought his activities on the first day of his tour to an end. Fred Kwame Asari's report for Joy News. And still on the campaign, the NPP leader continues his five-day tour of the Volta region today. And Fred Kwame Asari joins me live on the line with the latest. Fred, where is Nanado now and what has he been saying? Uh, Nanado just arrived at Dambai, where about hundreds of residents here have gathered to listen to him uh, as he delivered the uh, message of change to the electorate here. Uh, Nanado today will be visiting three constituencies. The crisis is and worse, and then the crisis in Tumuru uh, constituency, where he's expected to address rallies at all three constituencies. But then, as we speak, Nanado just arrived at Dambai, where uh, an enthused crowd here is waiting for him to deliver his message. All right, thank you very much, Fred Kwame Asari, and we'll bring you more in our subsequent bulletins. Just stay here on News Desk and join us on Morty TV. We have Mustafa Hamid on the line now. Hello, sir. Good morning to you. Thank you for joining us. Hello, Mr. Hamid. Hello, Mr. Hamid. Can you hear us? Let's try again. All right. It seems you're having challenges with the line to Mustafa Hamid, uh, who is part of the Nanado, the, actually the spokesperson for Nana Akofuado. And let's try again whether he's on the line. Hello, Mr. Hamid. Great. So we'll try and restore contact to him. Hello, Mustafa. All right. So we'll try and restore that contact and bring you that. But we know that Nana Kofado is in the water region as part of his campaign tour, five-day campaign tour of that region. Let's go to the eastern region now, where President Mahama is also scaling up uh, the campaign of the NDC. And I'm joined on the line now by our correspondent, Kofisian, who is following the president. Hello, Kofisian. Right, we don't have Kofisia on the line, but you're still here on News Desk on Joy News on Morty TV. And we are talking about the campaign trail. Nana Kofuado is in the Volta region, of course, the stronghold of the NDC. And then President Mahama is in the hometown of the leader of the opposition, New Patriotic Party, Nana Kofuado. Stay with us. We'll bring you everything you need to know in this bulletin. We'll be back shortly. <music> Forty-two days to this year's polls, and both the NDC and the NPP are also scaling up their campaign. Let's start off with President Mahama, who will be in Nana Akofuado's home region, where he is expected to commission two community day senior high schools at Takrasi and Kweufudia. He will also pay a Ketsi call on the Ochehini Amwetio Furipeni and inaugurate some completed cocoa roads at Chebi. And I'm joined on the line now by the spokesperson of the campaign team for the NDC, Madam Joyce Bauer. Good morning to you. Thank you for joining us. Good morning and thank you very much for having me. Good morning to all your listeners. Great. So you've been on the campaign trail with the president. Tell us, what do you think has been the uh, reception to the message from the president? Well, thank you very much. And um, indeed, you do know that President Mahama kick-started his campaign tour for 2016 in the Western region. We've actually been to the central region, to the northern region, Greater Accra, Rong Hafa region. We toured Greater Accra region again. We recently left the Volta region. And this week, we start our campaign tour of the eastern region. So we have actually visited about almost six regions of this country. And I must confess that party is poised for victory. Our grassroots are ready and waiting for victory. Above all, very ecstatic crowds have received President Mahama across the length and breadth of this county. Indeed, you do know that President Mahama has always admonished us to conduct an issues-based campaign. Above all, he's touting his achievements to the good people of Ghana, 
and of course promising on improving and enhancing our lives going forward after the 2016 victory. So let's talk about the agenda for the Eastern region. Uh, what percentage of the people are, is the NDC looking at getting for this particular region? Well, thank you very much. You do know that in terms of numbers, in terms of statistics, each and every region has actually set a quota and has been working towards it. For the eastern region in particular, they set the agenda 50-50. It is actually couch chair, which means divided into two or, you know, in equal parts or in equal portions or whatever you. So indeed, the people of the eastern region, the party representatives on the ground, the campaign team, each and every individual appointee in government who hails from the region has been working towards achieving the target of a 50-50 percent result, 50 for President Mahama and, of course, for the NDC. So we're still pursuing the agenda 50-50, and this week, President Mahama's tour of the eastern region would certainly enhance this agenda and, of course, see it pretty much to its likely conclusion. And indeed, talking about the agenda 5050, what is the target for parliamentary candidates there? How many seats are you, is the NDC looking at getting? Well, you do agree with me that if we're looking at 50%, it means we're looking at 50% across board. So we're also looking to improve upon our performance in the Eastern region in terms of our parliamentary representation as well. Presently, the National Democratic Congress is the majority in parliament. We are hoping to improve upon that number. And I do hope that the Eastern region, considering some of the individuals who have emerged as parliamentary candidates, I have no doubt that when it comes to the parliamentary as well as the presidential, we will certainly be achieving the target of Agenda 5050 as set by the NDC party in the Eastern region of Ghana. So what is the NDC doing to achieve this target? Well, you know that I would always say that I always take it from the Mahamas accounting to the people tour which took him round the country. He visited several of these regions over and over again. Indeed, when it comes to an equitable distribution of our social interventions, of our infrastructural development, of all the efforts that President Mahama has made in terms of education, in health and what have you, the Eastern region has benefited from its fair share. You do know that two of the community-based senior high schools, which are a flagship project of President Mahama in terms of his policy regarding improving quality of education, improving access to education, and above all, improving upon our educational facilities, actually feeds into the development and construction of the community day senior high school. So indeed, this afternoon, we will be setting up to the Eastern region. The first stop will be at Takrasi, where you'll be commissioning one of the newly constructed community day senior high schools for the good people of the Eastern region. Madam Joyce, well, uh, sorry, sorry to butt in. I would love you to hold on a bit. I, I need to speak to Mustafa Hamid, but I'll come to you again to continue with this conversation. And of course, uh, Mustafa Hamid is the spokesperson for Nana Kofwado. He joins us live on the line. Good morning to you, sir. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, good morning. Great. So you've also been on the campaign uh, trail with uh, uh, the leader of the opposition party. What would you say has been the reception to the message from Nana Kofuado? You mean the reception of the people of the voter region? Ex uh, exactly. You've been to the voter region. Yes, you are in the voter region as part of your campaign tour. And knowing yes, that absolutely. this is the headquarters of the NDC, what, what sort of reception have you received? Well, it, it, it's been overwhelming, I must tell you. Um, Right now, I'm having to move away, far, far, far away from the school park where we are having the rally today uh, in Dampai, which is part of the traffic uh, constituency. Um, yesterday, we came through uh, the North Dai and, and, and South Dai constituency. Um, and then we came to the Biakoye constituency. And this morning, we are starting off from the traffic uh, constituency. And I can tell you that um, from what I see on the ground, uh, we might even exceed our expectation. And we have said that our expectation is 30 percent of the vote in the in the vote All right. So you are looking at 30 percent. Is it just for the presidential or as well as the parliamentary? Well, just 30 percent for the presidential. Now for the parliamentary, um, the only place that we have ever held a seat um, is in the northern voter in the. In Kwanza South uh, constituency, 
uh, where Honorable Nayan was a member of Palace. Um, so our prospect for getting seats actually in the Volta region is here in the northern part of the Volta region. Um, we are hoping that we can get at least some three seats here in the northern part of the Volta region. Thank you very much. Mustafa Hamid is with the campaign team of the opposition NPP. I'm still, I, I still have on the line with me Madam Joyce Bauer to continue just to wrap up the conversation with, with her. Hello, Madam. Yes, good morning again. I'm here. Great. So tell us, uh, we know that President Mahama is supposed to be in the eastern region uh, to also you know, continue with his campaign through all the regions. When is he expected to be there and what sort of itinerary does he have on his paper? Well, President Mahama is expected to arrive in the eastern region this afternoon. Time for arrival should be about 1 p.m. hopefully. And he'll be starting with the commissioning of the community days near high school in Takrasi. He will take us all the way to Fantiakwa North for today and of course we'll end with a second commissioning tomorrow at the Hu Fodwa towards Koko. Indeed you also know that we will also be inaugurating uh, Koku roads that have been newly developed. President Mahama actually established the Koku roads fund to work on roads and rehabilitate access to Koku producing areas. So indeed the eastern region being one of such areas will be benefiting from some of these roads that have been funded from one of these key initiatives of President Mahama in terms of rehabilitating Koku roads. Indeed, he will also be calling on the Ochehini himself, and as is the practice, he normally calls on the traditional ruler to announce his presence in the region and above all to engage with the traditional ruler on matters of general concern. So like every other region that we've been to, he'll be doing similarly in the eastern region of Ghana. So indeed, there'll be several rallies, mini rallies, and what have you. There'll be several other engagements with students, in fact, one of the key things about President Mohammed's campaign tour has been his engagement with students in tertiary institutions. So indeed, you'll be engaging students in the eastern region as part of the tour. So certainly, several of the usual things that I believe that President Mohammed would as always stick to his message, which is the achievement in infrastructure, in terms of education, in health, in roads construction, and above all, in interventions such as water, such as electricity, and what have you. Above all, he'll also be taking his message of hope for the future. Indeed, all of these infrastructure projects that the Mahama envisages will create jobs for the good people of Ghana and, of course, put money in the pockets of the senior citizens who need to make a better living. So, indeed, I'm looking forward to a very, very successful tour of the eastern region. I'm looking forward to several projects that have been there for some time, being commissioned and others inaugurated. I'm also looking at a very peaceful and fantastic reception from the good people of the Eastern region. You do know that President Mahama has continued to enjoy great support from the good people of the Eastern region. He has several of his appointees, including the Honorable Minister for Communications, who hails from the region, the Honorable Chief of Staff himself, hails from the Eastern region, indeed the Attorney General of the Republic of Ghana, also hails from the Eastern region, and several other key individuals who work in President Mahama's government and above all, key individuals also who serve as executives within the party. So certainly I look forward to a fantastic engagement, a very successful tour, and above all, I look forward to this working to strengthen the agenda 50-50 for President Mahama and the NDC come December 2016. Thank you very much, Madam Joyce Bauer Mokhtari. She's the spokesperson for the NDC campaign team. You're still here on News Desk on Joy News on Multi TV, your election headquarters. Stay with us when we come back. We'll bring you that story about the 50 year old man who is allegedly killed and bent one of his workers and bolted. And then we'll also bring you the latest in the world of business and sports.